So far in this class, we've seen how to treat simple harmonic oscillators with uh, Lagrangian formalism. And then we looked at damped harmonic oscillators uh, using Lagrangians. And now we'll look at driven harmonic oscillators with Lagrangians. So we have our regular spring mass system, spring constant K, mass M, and we want to drive this uh, spring. So you could think about instead of just uh, grabbing the mass and letting it go, you keep hold of the mass and you wiggle it around at some with using some force. And let's look at a specific case of a sinusoidal force. Uh, so our drive force, F drive, will be some constant F zero times a sine of gamma T. And so this gamma is the angular frequency of the oscillation. So if you've plotted the, the driving force, F drive versus time, you would just get some sinusoidal thing. Okay, so let's investigate how to uh, use the Lagrangian formalism to treat this system. So if we look at our Euler uh, Lagrange equation for a simple harmonic oscillator. It looks like this. Take the total time derivative of the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to velocity in x equals the partial derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to position. Okay, so our Lagrangian was T minus V, which for the simple harmonic oscillator was one half m x dot squared plus one half or minus one half k x squared. So taking those derivatives, you get m x double dot equals negative k x. So if we want to solve that, we can move everything to the same side, divide by x, or divide by m. And then this type of second order differential equation had a solution like x as a function of t equals um, some constant times cosine of omega naught t, where omega naught is defined as the square root of k over m. And omega naught is the res resonant frequency of this system if there's no driving force and no dampening. And of course, this constant a out in front is the initial amplitude of your oscillation. So if you pulled the, uh, the mass two centimeters away from the equilibrium position, then this constant A would just be replaced by that two centimeters. Okay. So that's the Euler-Lagrange for just the regular simple harmonic oscillator. But now what happens if we drive the harmonic oscillator? So now uh, we have to modify our Euler-Lagrange. And so just how, just like we did uh, with the damped system, we'll still have our, the regular parts of our Euler Lagrange. But now we'll set equal to our driving force. 
And so this would be x double dot plus k over m x equals f zero um, sine of gamma t. Well, now this second order differential equation uh, is not like the ones that we've solved so far. So on the left-hand side, everything just depends on x and time. But on the right, we have something that depends on time, but it doesn't depend on position x. So we're not going to be able to solve this uh, quite as neatly as we've solved some other things. So in general, this kind of second order differential equation has this form. The position as a function of time equals some homogeneous part, which I'll denote as x sub with a subscript h, plus a particular part, x sub p. Okay, so now what do I mean by homogeneous and particular? So for the homogeneous solution, you take your Euler-Lagrange and you set it equal to zero, but if there is no driving force, And so this is just a regular simple harmonic oscillator. And we wrote down that solution earlier, which was a cosine mega naught t. And the mega naught was square root k over n. Okay, so that's the homogeneous solution. What about the particular solution? So the particular solution has to solve the full differential equation. So it has to solve this x double dot plus k over m x equals f drive, which is f naught sine gamma t. Okay, so we need to satisfy this equation. So a, an equation that could satisfy this particular solution would look something like this. F zero over gamma or omega naught squared minus gamma squared times sine of gamma t. Okay, so I'm just stating that this is a solution and we're gonna check now to see if this is actually a solution. So uh, if we look at the equation that has to satisfy, there's an x term and an x double dot term. So let's take two derivatives of this x term. So the f0, omega naught, and gamma are all constants. Now, if we take two derivatives of sine, the first derivative of sine is cosine, and then the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So this would be negative sine of gamma t. And then you have to do the chain rule. So the derivative of the inside term would be gamma, and we did that twice, so we get a gamma squared. So now we can plug this x into here and this x double dot into here. So this is the equation that we're plugging stuff into. Okay, uh, so we'll remember that this is omega naught squared, this k over m. Okay, so putting in the x0 term we had, or the x double dot term, we had f0, and there was a negative sign gamma squared over 
omega naught squared minus gamma squared sine of gamma t plus omega naught squared times F zero sine of gamma t. And then that has to equal F zero sine gamma t. Okay, so on the left-hand side, let's factor out F zero sine this term lost its denominator. So on the left-hand side, let's factor out F zero sine gamma T. And then we're left with negative gamma squared plus omega naught squared over omega naught squared minus gamma squared equals F zero sine gamma Okay, so there's an F zero sine of gamma T on both sides. So those cancel out. And then this fraction is just mega naught squared minus gamma squared over mega naught squared minus gamma squared. So that goes to one. And so you're left with at the end, one equals one. So that, that's a true statement. So this uh, function for the particular solution does satisfy this equation. F zero over mega naught squared minus gamma squared sine t. Okay, so if we put everything together, our total solution is our homogeneous solution plus our particular solution. So that would be um, a cosine of omega t plus F zero over omega naught squared minus gamma squared sine, and this is omega zero sine of gamma t. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Um, but you might notice that there's, we're going to run into a problem. So if we look at this term in the denominator, if omega naught equals gamma, so what if the uh, driving frequency equals the resonant frequency of the system, then this equation would imply that, so as uh, that your uh, position would go to infinity. And so that doesn't make sense. And so this particular solution might work for uh, other cases besides this special case where your driving frequency equals your resonant frequency, uh, but it doesn't work for that solution. So we need to come up with a different particular solution for that. So what if, uh, Omega naught equals gamma. So for that, we need another particular solution. And this one is a bit more complicated. It looks like a squared plus b plus f0 over 2 omega. And so I'm going to say that omega naught and gamma are just equal to this term omega now. Times t, and then cosine of omega t minus this phase term. And so, just as an aside, I've been ignoring uh, 
that phase term in all of our solutions so far. So uh, just as a sidetrack, the actual solution to this second order differential equation in its most general form um, would be A cosine of omega t plus some phase shift. So I've been ignoring this because the, the phase shift term wasn't really, uh, it didn't really have any physical relevance. So uh, a phase shift would just be, so if this is your, let's see, we'll do the original one in black. If this was your original sine graph, then a phase shift would just shift the starting position uh, by some amount. So let's say, you started here, and then it went like that. So the, the difference between these peaks would just be that phase shift phi. Okay, so the when you're just dealing with a simple harmonic oscillator or even a damped harmonic oscillator, that phase shift is, it doesn't really have any physical meaning because we could just redefine our uh, time t equals zero to be here. And then the, nothing in our system has changed. So I've just been neglecting that term because I didn't want to write this plus phi everywhere. Now, however, uh, this phase term in this equation has a physical meaning. So if this is our new particular solution, let me just check. This term should be squared. So, and by physical meaning, I mean that this phase shift now depends on the physical system. And so this a and B are just set by the, uh, your initial conditions. But now your phase depends on time. And so what this means is that uh, when you start uh, driving this oscillator at this frequency alpha, the system will take some time to react to that change. And so this phase shift is incorporating the basically the lag time between you starting to drive the oscillator at that frequency and how long it would take the oscillator to actually start oscillating at that frequency. Okay. So uh, let's look at this equation a little bit uh, more in depth, this particular solution equation. So if we want to look at the time as you go towards infinity. So the cosine term is just going to keep oscillating. So uh, that's not 
hugely uh, interesting. But this leading term, uh, so as time gets really, really big, the A and B constants are not going to be able to keep up. And so you're left with this leading term of F0 T squared or F0 T over two omega cosine of omega t minus phi. So this will be the leading term. And what's interesting is that basically as you go towards a um, so uh, remember that we've said omega is the uh, same as omega naught, which is the same as the driving frequency gamma. So as you go towards a really big time, uh, your system is just going to oscillate at the um, frequency of the driving frequency. So, so as you go towards time equals infinity, the system oscillates at the driving frequency, which is maybe what you would expect. And so if we write down our total solution again, so homogeneous plus particular, we get a cosine of omega t plus square root of a squared plus b plus f0 over 2 omega t squared cosine of omega t minus phi. So this is our total solution. So this is the, um, looks like the regular harmonic oscillator uh, term. And so this is going to matter more, or this is going to matter at small t, so short time scales. But then this term is going to dominate Uh, at longer time scales. So these effects are sometimes called transient effects. And uh, sometimes in the real world, uh, we're not necessarily interested in the system when you first like start driving it at this frequency. We more are interested in um, what's the state of the system going to be a long time after we've started driving it. And so this is sometimes called the steady state, steady state solution. So you can kind of ignore the homogeneous part because the uh, particular solution part is going to be the one that dominates the um, the behavior of the oscillator. Okay, so now we've seen the solutions for the simple harmonic oscillator, the damped harmonic oscillator, and now the driven harmonic oscillator. So in the next video, I'm going to show you the solution for the driven damped harmonic oscillator. This has been a Dr. Strassbau lecture. Keep the credentials. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for notifications.